Modern Farmhouse took the world by storm in the early 2010s with Chip and Joanna Gain from Fixer Upper debuting on HGTV. But despite this interior trend lasting over a decade, there is one demographic of people that refuse to give it up and that is the rich millennial. From house flips to home renovations, if a millennial finds a single ounce of character that does not fit their modern farmhouse dream, it is sure to be destroyed. But this style isn't just about renovating and updating a home. No, no. This is now a symbol of wealth to the rich millennial. Today we are going to be discussing why rich people love modern farmhouse so much and how it became a status symbol of wealth and also hiding said wealth in the design world. But what is modern farmhouse? Well, modern farmhouse is technically two trends mixed together modern and farmhouse. And the way that I love to explain it is just imagine a rich woman that has never been on a farm before. That is what her perception is of modern farmhouse and what it should look like. And modern farmhouse has a few key details. Those can include a neutral color palette, shiplap everywhere, wooden beams, a barn door, distressed furniture, and at least one sign telling you what to do in the space. So like eat, in the kitchen. Joanna Gaines was certainly the biggest influencer of her time because of her show Fixer Upper and they ended up transforming Waco, Texas from a sleepy old town no one had pretty much heard of into farmhouse capital. This trend was extremely loved but admittedly it was a little on the nose. A lot of barnhouse decor were on full display and so it was seen as a little bit kitschy. I thought Word. you were gonna be like shiplap, a shiplap, a shiplap, a shiplap. <laughs> like you do on all the other houses. At this stage, it was not seen as a status symbol. Fast forward to 2020 and we have a more pared back and even more modern style. The color palette pretty much only allows for black, white, and timber. Walls rarely have texture. The barn door, distressed furniture, and signs are out. And industrial lights and white timber flooring are in. The evolved look has been led by a new generation of designers like Studio McGee. Also, if you really want a bad design show, watch that one. Oh my God, <laughs> it is like so awkward. Careful space planning so we can utilize every inch of the room. The inches matter down here. Down here. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say down there. I just said down in the basement. I did not actually say that. I didn't that. say that so, though. I know. Since then, this trend has taken on a life of its own. And if you see a millennial couple on TikTok talking about their renovations, you can almost certainly assume there's going to be some aspect of modern farmhouse touches. From vaulted ceilings to wooden timber beams, white walls, black window trim, and industrial pendant lighting. And look, I'm not saying that this design trend is particularly bad, but I do think it's not something that's very livable because as soon as you see Studio Mickey try to live in their space, it just starts falling apart once you try to live. Because of the super reduced color palette, as soon as you add in anything that doesn't fit in, whether that be a family heirloom, your kid's painting from school, or even just the slightest bit of mess, the entire design falls apart because life isn't just white, black, and timber. That's where we start to see this status symbol come into play. It is something that is very, very difficult to maintain, especially all the time. Particularly online, being able to show constantly perfect looking homes suggests that they are better than you because they somehow keep their home looking like an open inspection. It highlights how menial tasks that usually burden all of us they are above. But then it's weirdly juxtaposed by this idea of living in a farm due to the farmhouse aesthetic. And so it kind of gives us this idea that actually they are much humbler and much more down to earth than what they are almost suggesting to you on the other part. So it's this really weird push and pull of we are better than you, but actually we're really the same as you. Because here at Globo Gym, we're better than you and we know it. And mind you, this isn't something that is new. Celebrities and even royalty have been doing it for a lot longer than you would think. And that is why we need to talk about Marie Antoinette. Yeah, I'm not joking. Marie Antoinette actually has something to do with this. So Marie Antoinette, best known for her let them eat cake line and death after said line, instructed the creation of a fake village in the backyard of Chateau de Versailles so she could have a taste of country lifestyle. 
This village had a working farm and villagers who maintained it as well. Marie was apparently known to go down on occasion and milk cows. And this was used as a way for her to experience farm life while being an elite woman. And it was also used as educational purposes for the royal children. Marie Antoinette was not the first person to do this. And it was actually something in vogue to do at the time. Louis XV's sister actually also did a very similar thing. And it seems that during times of bad press, the rich try and find a way to integrate back into society in their own weird little ways. A modern day example of this is Bellarina Farms. Personally, I actually really love this channel, but I do think it is really unique for one particular reason. So on this channel, you see this woman and she's always making sourdough bread and is with her many children and loving husband on this homestead. The thing that they do not tell you is that they are billionaires. Daniel, the husband, is the son of the man who founded JetBlue Airlines, but you would never know that. All they show you is this picturesque life of living as if they were living within their means. Personally, I love the design of their home. It is definitely more on the country home setting sort of side and not really the modern farmhouse that we've been discussing, but especially when you're billionaires, you kind of have to go to that extreme. I think that there are two, maybe three main reasons as to why they do this. And the reason why that they almost dress up like they're poor is to gain acceptance and respect from the public. But then also they may also be looking for a way to have purpose. And I think that this may be the case for them. I don't think that that is the case for most of the rich millennials, but I think in their specific case, I think it also creates a level of purpose. In recent years, the disdain for the rich has certainly grown. It's in our media and it's in our culture to eat the rich. Even if you don't personally feel that way, the general perception of the rich isn't currently something people aspire towards. Instead of seeing their home or things they have as aspirational, it's now seen as a form of greed, overconsumption, and rubbing it in our faces, especially now with social media. Because of this, I believe the modern farmhouse trend has been a scapegoat to attempt to suppress that blow for those who are well off. In extreme examples like Bellarina Farms and their wealth, they went full farm homestead. Those well off, but not to that extent, instead of having an ultra modern or ultra trendy home, which does often get touted as the rich person's architecture, some opt for a modern farmhouse because it has that slight rustic charm, which brings them back down to looking like us. But here's the thing, they've taken it a step too far. What originally was the farmhouse trend was a little bit more of a themed style. You use actual barn items to style the space. And now you've gone ahead and over polished it to the point where it's too restrictive with especially its color palette. The white, black and brown slash white oak flooring makes it extremely restrictive for anything of personality to actually shine in the space because it'll stand out like a sore thumb. It's this weird balance between having the space feel staged, but also having it not feel like just this really weird theme. And I think at this point now, farmhouse or modern farmhouse, I should say, has become this overpolished look that not many people can actually achieve long term. But here's the thing, the style is starting to evolve. And there are two ways it is kind of evolving too. So the builder's special modern farmhouse that now us plebs can have, or it's going to this more cottage, farmhouse, Euro farmhouse, depending on who you ask. On the one side, we have this builder special. It has been pared back even more, but has some minor ask accents of the farmhouse trend from having timber beams somewhere and that white and black and oak look. It is missing certain features like vaulted ceilings. Or we have this super moody and super contemporary looking space that allows for all different colors and all different textures to actually take place. I'm sure you guys can probably tell which one I personally prefer, but I'll tell you why. The McGee home literally looks like a stage. I cannot fathom that space actually being used as it almost doesn't look real. It feels a little alien. Could I imagine myself baking a loaf of bread in there? No. In this other room? Hell yeah. I honestly feel like I could have been making bread there with my grandmother for the last 20 years because it has this feeling of personality and uniqueness about it that makes it feel so inviting. Rich millennials are certainly well known for this trend, but I do hope that they can evolve and change. Just adding a little bit of color or personality somewhere, really make it your own. I'm not really trying to attack this trend as something that you should never do. I actually think it's a really nice trend that has just become so over polished and cookie cutter that it has lost 
full spark. There's a lot of reasons why this design trend was so popular and it's not just for the rich, but I did really just want to draw that comparison. Do you think that something like this is now happening with another trend or a different design style? Please let me know in the comments and I will see you in our next internet venture.